Hi, this week on Kitchen Science we're going to be making indicators, which are chemicals that tell us if something is acidic or alkaline. Really important, just because an alkali is the opposite of an acid, it doesn't mean it's any less dangerous. Right in the middle is water, that's neutral. But anything really far on this side is going to be dangerous and acidic. Anything really far on this side is going to be equally as dangerous, but it's going to be alkaline. And I'll explain what those two terms mean in a second. So, what we need to do for this is we need to boil uh, red cabbage, uh, because that's the only good thing red cabbage is good for, because it's disgusting. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to chop up red cabbage, but that's what chopped raw cabbage looks like. You get some chopped cabbage, boil it for about five minutes, and honestly, you get so much from this, I can even dilute this. I could probably double that. That's it, that's our indicator. That is gonna tell us whether a chemical is acidic or alkaline. Um, and count yourself lucky that you can't smell this cabbage juice. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's all purple at the moment. And it actually matches my vest top, which is nice. Okay. We're going to start with bicarbonate of soda, sodium bicarbonate, baking soda is what the Americans call it, um, it's all the same thing. Now, being a science teacher, I already know that this is alkaline, so let's see what colour this will turn. I just keep stirring. And it's gone this beautiful blue colour. Awesome. And then moving on. I also have to know that washing up liquid and most cleaning um, products are generally uh, alkaline as well. So let's see what happens here. Give it a little stirry stir. Whoa, okay. <laughs> So this one's gone pink. Interesting. Now I don't know if that means it's more alkaline or less alkaline, or if it's actually acid. Let's do bleach. Bleach is one of the strongest alkalines you can get in your house. And kind of starts off greeny blue, just like with the bicarbonate of soda, but then it kind of keeps going. That's really cool. Okay, and then the last one. Got to be careful with bleach because it is very dangerous. I've put even more in this time, so let's see what it does. Wow, the combination of cabbage and bleach uh, is really not working for me right now. It's not <laughs> a nice smell. Mm -mm. Okay, so that is our scale of weak alkali to strong alkali. This is different to the universal indicator that we use in school. The universal indicator that we use in schools contains lots and lots of different dyes that all react to different things, um, but this is just one chemical that's reacting. Um, right, so that's alkalis done. We're gonna move on to acids. Okay, so that's the alkalis done. We're gonna look at acids now. We've been digging around the house and I found some distilled malt vinegar, which is actually a great um, cleaning alternative, really eco-friendly, and it's actually what a lot of our grandparents and great-grandparents would have used to clean their houses anyway. Um, trust Mr. Evans to talk about eco-friendly cleaning. And I also found some lemons as well. So, what I'm just gonna start with, one teaspoon of juice of the lemon, and Let's see what this does to it. Ooh. Beautiful reddish kind of pink colour. In fact, that's a similar colour to the washing up liquid. So I'm starting to think, is this actually slightly acidic? Interesting. I'll do some Googling later. Uh, and now vinegar, which if you didn't know is actually made of very, 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 very old fermented grape juice. Let's have a look. So that's one teaspoon as well. Not 
as vibrant as this one, so that would suggest that the lemon juice is slightly more acidic than the vinegar. Um, and then just for just for good showmanship, let's just get the whole thing in here. Um, so really, you should just just play around with this. There's lots of lots of chemicals you can use in the house. Um, lots of you know just things like foods, maybe even like tea or coffee could work out whether it's acidic or alkaline. Um, and just, just have fun with it, really. Um, you can also make indicators using uh, beetroot, um, onion skin. Uh, onion skin's not as fun, though, because you don't get as exciting colours. It's just kind of yellowy-brown or no colour at all. But, um, yeah, just have fun with it. Um, I'm going to explain what all this acid-alkaline nonsense is now, OK? OK, so anything that is an acid will contain something called hydrogen ions, which are just kind of like atoms, little particles, but they have a positive charge. Alkalis, on the other hand, have something called hydroxide ions. These have a negative charge. Both can be dangerous, both can cause chemical reactions to happen, but if you have an equal amount of both these two things, you have the exact same amount of hydrogen ions as hydroxide ions, then the effect is cancelled out and it becomes neutral. And if you think about it, if I've got two hydrogens and one oxygen, what does that sound a bit like? Two hydrogens and one oxygen. When you add an acid to an alkali, they neutralise each other to form water and then usually another gas like hydrogen or carbon dioxide. Now, we're going to look at our favourite ingredient in this kitchen science series, which is bicarbonate of soda. Bicarb is an alkali, so when it reacts with acid, it forms water and carbon dioxide. Those bubbles of carbon dioxide is what makes the cake um, so fluffy um, and gives it a really good texture. But that means that bicarbonate of soda will not work if there is no acid in the cake batter. So this is just water. So if I add it, it doesn't really do anything because it's just an alkali in some water. However, if I add the bicarb to some vinegar, so you've got an alkali and an acid, and there are your carbon dioxide bubbles. Pretty cool. So, what that means is for um, baking is if you're using bicarbonate of soda, you need to have some kind of acid in the cake mix, whether that's lemon juice or whatever. But baking powder, baking powder is different. Baking powder is actually just bicarbonate of soda. It's that and some powdered acid so that the reaction will happen on its own. You don't need to add acid to the cake mix. So why aren't they reacting already? That's because there's a third component. There's flour in there, and the flour stops the acid particles touching the alkali particles. The moment you add bicarb, uh, sorry, baking powder to water, you should actually get a reaction going because the acids and the alkali are now able to mix. And you can see bubbles are forming, but they're not forming in the bicarb. You have to add acids to make the bicarb work. Okay, cool. Um, so what I want you guys to do is just have a go, make some indicators, have fun with it. You can test any chemicals you want in the house. Obviously, make sure your parents are there on standby as well. And just enjoy yourselves. Happy sciencing, and I'll see you next week.